Wise taking presentation at Tongo Imaging's office. I'm with Arvind here, who is the founder of Tongo Imaging. They're doing some cutting edge stuff, and today we're going to find out exactly what that is. Arvind, thanks for being here. Okay. Thanks for having us, actually. <laughs> so, uh, you know, just to start off, you, you were recently in the news for uh, raising a lot of money from Artman Ventures. Uh, before we get into all that, what does Tongo do, and would you like to share? Name on a uh, little on its unusual name. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, actually, it's not the name, right? So Tongo, uh, Tongo means dragonfly in Japanese, um, and uh, dragonflies are interesting uh, insects, right? So they have a, they got a ton of eyes. They got about forty thousand eyes, and uh, each eye uh, is a miniature sensor processor by itself. Um, so the way dragonflies work is they take uh, you know sensing data from each of these points, combine them together uh, to give a complete image. And uh, it's quite amazing the kind of things dragonflies can do, right? Dragonflies can, uh, you know, uh, they, 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 they can fly, in, they can fly really fast. Uh, they can navigate through tunnels. Uh, they can fly in very low light conditions, and they do all of this with such a small package. And uh, Tongo essentially is dragonfly in Japanese. And uh, the reason we call our company Tongo is, uh, you know, if, you, if you look at traditional cameras, right? I mean, even though uh, multiple eyes are better than one eye, uh, cameras have always being a single aperture system, so they have had only one eye, and uh, they kind of limitations in a single aperture system. It allows light to come in, but if you want more light to come in, the aperture needs to be very large. And uh, so one of the things we, we started looking at was, well, if a dragonfly can do sensing and processing in such a small package, uh, why can't we design cameras which can do sensing, navigation, and processing in a small package? And uh, so we decided, that, you know, we, uh, we 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 said, you know, let's let's create a company uh, which builds imaging technology, which is low power, low size, uh, small size, and uh, costs a fraction of what imaging systems cost today. And uh, let's mimic how sensing and processing happens in nature. And that's pretty much what Tongo Imaging does. Brilliant. Uh, so. Uh Imaging is a very niche area to be in, right? Yeah. Uh, India is not really known for making cutting edge technology, but from what the demos that you've shown us, this is really up there uh, in the in standards of cutting edge. Why is why do you think there's a lack in innovation in India, and uh, is it because that there is very little talent here, or are there other factors? So I think uh, the, the problem is to do with uh, so it's, it's actually twofold, right? It's a problem of investment and a problem of execution. Right? Uh, if you go to any uh, traditional venture capitalist in India and try to raise money for a hardcore technology products business, very often they tell you that it is not of interest to them. And that's one of the reasons why we raise money from Artiman. I mean, Artiman is a very special fund. Uh, I mean, you don't you don't see funds like Artiman uh, every day, right? So most VCs they are looking for a very quick return. They're looking for you know, their 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 attention span really is only about three to five years. Uh, they invest in companies which are really momentum stocks. They invest in e-commerce because that's the flavor of the day. They invest in retail. They invest in uh, mobile. Uh, but if you go to a VC and say invest in sensor business, he say, uh, you know, I don't know anything about sensor business. And when you look at Silicon Valley, right? uh, Silicon Valley companies and the whole ecosystem uh, was nurtured by VCs. I mean, they invested in cutting edge technology, knowing very well the risks of investing there. They said, look, you invest in a, in a materials business or you invest in, you know. Plastics, or you invest in uh, nanophotonics. The returns are doubtful. You may not make the returns, but you will build a technology which where somebody else can make returns later. So mm -hmm. you can build the ecosystem. And Silicon Valley venture capitalists were actually very good at taking those risks. Uh, unfortunately, the same Silicon Valley venture capitalists when they came to India, uh, except I mean, Artiman is an exception, but every other Silicon Valley venture capitalist, they decided that you know they were not in the innovation business and they really invested in. Uh, Me Too companies. I mean, if you look at companies, I mean, so right now, you know, they, they, they invest in, you know, they invest in Flipkart, they invest in mobile commerce. They all, uh, you know, they, they invest in this company, uh, 70 mm, which is a Netflix copy. So uh, they basically they're very comfortable investing in something which has succeeded elsewhere, but they have not been very good at taking risks at companies which are fundamentally innovative. So if you try building a product business, that's the problem. So, the, so it's venture, uh, it's a venture capitalist, you know, uh, it, it's a finance problem. It's a finance problem. I don't think it's a talent problem at all because, uh, so if you, if you look at the United States, money for technology innovations comes from two sources. It comes either from the US government in the form of DOD money, Department of Defense money, or it comes from venture capitalists. In India, the Indian government does not fund technology innovations. I mean, they do have small grants in Department of Science and Technology, but that's very meager and that can't really 
fund technology development and Indian venture capitalists don't fund, so that becomes a problem. How hard was it for you to raise money from Artem and Manjit? I mean, you've told me that it's a very special venture, but still, uh, you know, being in the niche technology business, being a company based out of India as well, how difficult was it? So, as I said, right, so Tombo is a global company. Yeah, Tombo is not an, I mean, we are not an India centric company at all. I mean, India, India is of special interest to us because, you know, we are Indians and we have, uh, you know, and, and we see the huge potential in the Indian market. Uh, but if we were only an India centric company, uh, it's very hard to raise money, right? Because Indian business is quite fickle. Uh, so we are a global company and Tombo, uh, so Artiman, the interesting part of Artiman is Artiman is a fund which takes risks. They invest in and, and they, 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 they have only two criteria. They have to be convinced that the technology is sound and superior and uh, they have to be convinced that uh, the founder knows what he's talking about. These are the only two criteria. Artiman actually did not even know how much money we made last year before investing. Yes. So they, they had no idea. My, and anyway, they, we, and, and one of the first things we did as Convo was we bought out we bought Serial Innovations and uh, Serial Innovations were one of the first acquisitions for the money and uh, uh, Artiman had no idea how much money Serial Innovations made either. So they, they, their, their philosophy is invest in complete white spaces, right? So they invest in, they want people to start ground up and think of what all are the applications rather than saying, okay, I'm, I'm, I have an internet business or I have a mobile business or I have a defense business or a security business. That's why I said we are not a defense business, we are not a security business, we are not you know, a robotics business. We are a vision and imaging company and we want the base technology to be applicable across as many different businesses as possible. And that's what the argument like, so that's why they used to So that was the question, yeah, it wasn't hard because, uh, I mean, argument didn't take very long to decide on the investment. They, they took less than, I mean, what, six weeks to tell me that they will put in money. In this, uh, you know, field of expertise, how, what is the kind of education that you need? You are a PhD from Carnegie Mellon, right? So I did my doctoral work at Carnegie Mellon. I'm a PhD dropout actually. Okay. So, I, so my advisor is on a board of advisors as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Takio Kanare, who's one of the founding fathers of computer vision and robotics, uh, mm -hmm. is on a board of advisors. And, uh, wow. uh, and uh, Takio used to be my advisor at, uh, at CMU. And so the thing is that you, you, need, you need fundamental education in electronics. You need fundamental education in sciences and physics. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's something which is lacking in India because if you look at it, most of the schools are all the emphasis on is how do you build applications. Right. India builds great software engineers, right? I mean, we have uh, you know programmers who, who understand how to use uh, you know, Java or Visual Studio and that kind of stuff. But you have very few people who understand how to build fundamental electronic systems, how to build uh, how to, I mean uh, I mean the physics of the entire thing. And the only guys who understand physics are in academia. Right. There are no physicists or no. Uh, you know, high-powered physics and electronics guys in industry, and uh, that's that's the problem because there is not enough you know, motivation or initiative for them to be there. So I, I mean, you earlier told me that hiring isn't uh, going to be large scale in terms of technology, but is finding these 20, 30 people difficult? So in we hire in India. So we have uh, so we have a global hiring policy. We don't we don't hire from India specifically. Uh, we hire from any part of the world. We hire in Israel, we hire in the United States, we hire in India, and we hire in Singapore. Uh, and uh, it doesn't really matter to us where the person is because it, because the point is that if you want good talent, you can't shy away from paying good money for good talent. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we we decided that you know we want to build a world class products, technology products business. And uh, there's no sense saying that I want to pay the same kind of salaries which Wipro or Infosys pays and try to. Get that. It's not possible. So it's, it's, I mean, it's a different ball game, and you need to play it the right way. No. So my question was, would you actually be? Is it difficult to find those uh, resources in India? So uh, we hire. So I actually where we hire from in India. In India, we hire from uh, uh, IFC. Uh, we hire from Triple uh, IT Hyderabad, which is excellent. It's one of the best places to hire vision people is Triple IT Hyderabad. Uh, we hire from uh, IIT Bombay. So we, 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 we we interview candidates from all these places. And uh, it is hard because one of the problems is that uh, most of the people who come, we interview them, they, they are, many of them have good bookish knowledge. They understand, you know, they, they understand theory well, uh, but they have not done really a lot of hands-on stuff. And you, so our interview process also is that we do not, we do not ask people, uh, you know, questions on what they have done. We, that's that's just a small part of it. They have to actually, actually code or actually use the hardware in front of us and show what they can do with it. So if it's a person who's coming in for an uh, for an embedded systems
job, a person who is coming in for a DSP job to be able to do it, we give him a DSP and say now program it. And you got a whole day, sit here, do, this is what we expect you to do. And uh, that's why we, we, we got really top class talent when it comes to actual technology guys, because these are guys who have been around for about 4-5 years, they have very low rate of attrition, people have come are people who decided that they like this and they stay here and um, many other people who come here are people who come to go to grad school so one of the other reasons they come here is it's a good springboard to grad school they spend three years here they publish papers they do a lot of technology work um, they go to great grad schools mm -hmm. so um, you know guys coming here go to Wharton they go to Harvard they go to MIT so they have they, because they've got their foundation built very strong and they're happy to do that they come here spend two three years and go there that's good stuff mm -hmm. that's good for us because we we like them to do that so, yeah, and others who have decided to stay are people who want to build a career in this business, so. You know, as Tonbo Imaging, what are some of the products that you would be delving the offering in the so Tonbo, so, Tonbo as a company uh, is focused on three, on three big areas, right? Uh, and defense is definitely of interest to us uh, because uh, defense requires a lot of these technologies. Uh, a market which is of very significant interest to us is security. Uh, mm -hmm. So, we built cameras for long-range surveillance, long-range observation. Uh, cameras that can see in day and night conditions, cameras that can automatically analyze when something is going wrong and raise an alarm. Uh, that's of interest and there are products in that space. Uh, automotive is of great interest because you know when you look at uh, modern cars, there's a lot of legislation coming in also that these cars have to be more intelligent because you know you want to monitor driver drowsiness, you want to be able to detect oh, okay. collisions, you want to detect collisions before they happen. Because right now, for instance, what happens in automobiles is a lot of the sensing is really immediately just before the collision is going to happen. Yes. So for instance, if you have a child in the front seat of a car and uh, your accelerometer is going to sense that a collision is going to happen in two seconds, the airbag will be deployed so fast that the child is probably going to be killed. So if you know five seconds before the collision is going to happen, then you can reduce the speed of airbag deployment. Therefore, the, the impact will not be so much. So to be able to do that, you need to be able to sense faster and sense farther. And vision systems and imaging systems can do that. So we built imaging systems which can sense on automobiles to do collision detection at a, at a longer range. So we work with a lot of automotive customers, that's our interest us. Uh, we make products which go on to industrial robots for automation and inspection. So these are camera systems which sit on industrial robots to be able to pick and place mm -hmm. objects. So uh, I mean, this is a long answer to a short question. So it's like being, uh, our, our products are going to be uh, camera systems. Uh, there will be different manifestations of camera systems, be it for security, be it for defense, or be it for automotive or industrial robotics. So different types of cameras are working. Interesting. So, uh, you know, to sign off, what is your plans for the future? What do you want to do with this current fund? Okay. And uh, what do you see Tongo being in the next five years? See, uh, Tongo, uh, as I mentioned before, right, Tongo is, uh, we are looking for Tongo to be a global company. And uh, Tom, I, I want Tonbo to be the next BAE systems or electronics or the next Raytheon or electronics. Is that the benchmark right now? Yeah, I, would, I, I really think Raytheon and BAE are very innovative companies, Raytheon especially. And uh, the point is that these are companies which have started with some expertise. Their expertise was radar systems and they built other things around it. Our expertise is electronics systems and we like to build other things around it and you know, build be a large uh, you know, uh, strategic electronics company. And uh, we are not, as I said, our, our, our focus is we want to be anywhere where you can sense, understand and control an environment. Uh, as for the utilization of this fund, uh, we are looking to use this fund for more R&D because we are constantly innovating. I mean, we have uh, quite a few patents, we have a lot of technology, so we need to keep building that up. Uh, we are looking to do a lot of sales and marketing hires internationally because we are pretty low profile right now. We don't really do a lot of sales and marketing shows. We do very few trade shows, so we are looking to do that. Uh, I'm looking to uh, set up a, an assembly infrastructure for testing of a lot of this equipment, and uh, that's pretty. And, and we're looking to uh, essentially do some acquisitions as well. So we've we've got a lot of uh, commitment from strategic electronics, strategic players who have wanted to acquire us in the past, and now we told them that look, you know, we don't want to be acquired. All we want is an investment from them. So we have a lot of very large foreign and domestic players who have expressed interest that they want to invest in the next round. And uh, so we will take that money and we are, we are looking at acquisitions. Arvind, it's, it's been a pleasure. Thanks Thank for you. having us. And Thank you. We really have set an example for cutting edge in each technology in India. Thank you.